Welcome. It's amazing that we can capture images of the night sky like this with smartphones. This was the final image from the last video. It looks pretty good, but there are some issues. If we zoom in, we'll notice that the stars are not stable. There is some movement from the Earth's rotation. Also, the sky isn't a clean black color. There seems to be lots of noise in between the stars. Now take a look at this Pixel 3 image that I took that same night of the same area of the sky, and notice a difference. Notice how the sky looks black and the stars are perfectly sharp. Why is there a big difference? Both of these are smartphones with similar sensors. In this video, I'll dive deeper into what's going on. If you're new to the channel, welcome. This channel is all about helping you get the best photos and videos from your smartphone. More Xperia content and coverage on other phones like the Pixel 5 and iPhone 12 is coming. So subscribe to join our small community if you haven't already. In part one, we covered the full process to plan, capture, and edit photos of the stars using the Xperia 1 Mark II. If you haven't already watched that video, go check it out first. Many of the steps apply even if you're using a different phone, like a Google Pixel device. This video is a deeper dive into shooting Astro with phones, and we'll compare the Xperia's manual approach to the Google Pixel's auto approach. I'll also share some tips and cover editing Astro RAW files in more detail. With astrophotography, there are three main challenges. One challenge is capturing enough light as the objects in the sky are dim and far away. To capture them, we have to use slow shutter speeds, like 30 seconds on smartphones like the Xperia 1 Mark II. Unfortunately, at 30 seconds, there will be some movement in the sky and the photo won't be perfectly sharp. There are some formulas to determine how slow of a shutter speed is acceptable for a sharp astro image for the specific device. And here you can see, using photo pills, I can see that you know we need to keep it under 20 seconds in the case of a smartphone, you know, 25, 26 millimeter sensor. So given this, we could shoot at 15 seconds on the Xperia, but that won't capture as much detail as we would like. So this leads into challenge number two, reducing the image noise. We're asking a lot from the sensor when shooting into the dark night sky, and a single shot can only capture so much. When we try to extract detail, we likely will see artifacts from the image sensor, like we do with the Xperia image. A common way to reduce noise is to shoot multiple shots and combine them. Astrophotographers will take many images back to back and use software like this to align and combine them into a single image. All we need is the intervalometer mode where the camera will capture many images back to back in a sequence. Unfortunately, phones like the Xperia don't have such a mode, so we're limited to single shot. Hopefully Sony adds something like this. This process can also be done automatically, which is exactly what Google does with the Google Pixel 3 and 4 family of phones. Notice that the Pixel 3 here is keeping the shutter speed under 15-16 seconds to make sure that the stars have no movement. Also, by combining multiple images, there's little noise in the black sky, which is why a photo like this looks pretty clean. But there is a downside. We don't see as much detail when we compare this image to the one we took on the Xperia. We can't see the galaxy. Now, it's also worth noting that the Pixel 4 can do better than the Pixel 3 because it takes more images, but the approach and result is roughly the same. So this leads us into the third challenge, which is editing the photo. With the Pixel devices, there isn't much we can change. The image that Nightside gives us is what we get. But with the RAW files that we get from a phone like the Xperia, we can change things. So let's take a look at an example. Here's a RAW file of an image taken in a light polluted suburb. And I wanted to walk through this in a little more detail to make sure everyone understands how I go through this process. So the first thing I would do is get rid of this light pollution. And to do that, we have to bump up the dehaze. And we're going to move the dehaze up quite a bit uh, to be able to see the image. The next thing I would do is add a little bit of clarity uh, to bring out the galaxy. And then I would work my way up to the light section. And so here, you know, I'll bring the exposure down. You can see I'm trying to bring the histogram down a little bit at the top. And then I would add a little bit of contrast and then bump up the whites a little bit and bring down the blacks a little bit just to make it a little more contrasty. The next thing I would do is actually go into the point curve and add a little bit of an S shape to give it a little more contrast as well. Now a common issue that you might run into is all of this light coming from the horizon at the bottom. 
And since this is in a light polluted area, I'm getting a lot of that city light that's leaking up from the bottom. Now a great way to minimize this even further is to add a gradient. So if I go over to the gradient and I add a linear gradient at the bottom, I just kind of want to line this up from where the light is coming from at the bottom. And to keep this simple, all I'll do with this linear gradient is bring down the exposure just a bit, just to darken it. And once we do this, you can see it kind of balances out. We have to be careful with how much exposure we actually bring down. But you can see once we're done, uh, it looks pretty good. And there we go. Now this isn't a award-winning Astro shot, but hopefully it gives you a better idea of the process of editing an Astro RAW file. In summary, there are two approaches to shooting astrophotography with smartphones. You can go manual by shooting RAW with devices like the Xperia 1 Mark II, or automatic by using night mode on devices like the Pixel 3. Both can provide some amazing results, and both have their pros and cons, which hopefully you have a better idea of now. And to drive this point home, take a look at this image taken with the Pixel 4, and then this image taken with the Xperia 1 Mark II. Both are pretty impressive. I hope you found that helpful. More videos on the Xperia 1 Mark II, the upcoming Xperia 5 Mark II, and other smartphones are coming. So subscribe if you're new to the channel. The Filmic Pro versus Cinema Pro comparison is also coming soon, so keep an eye out for that. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.